Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the LUFC Fan Zone podcast. I'm Sam Isles. And I'm Jack Ellis. In each episode, we'll be talking to an ex-Leeds United player or manager about their time at the club. Last episode, we spoke with former Leeds United midfielder Eric Backer. And last week was section two of episode 26, with Eric talking about the decline of Leeds United, with the club going from the Champions League semi-final to the Championship in just three seasons. The first section of episode 26 was all about Leeds' success. However, last week's episode was a stark contrast from that, wasn't it, Jack? Yeah, yeah, it really was. And it was quite interesting to hear him speak about it firsthand, although I wasn't probably old enough to remember it at the time. Hearing it from him firsthand was a bit of an eye-opener, almost, because he had a lot of stories to tell. And he had a very strong opinion about, well, one person in particular being Ken Bates which I'm sure a lot of other people do as well. But yeah, it was interesting. And it's, you know, if you haven't listened already, it's definitely worth a listen. Yeah, and and as well as a decline for Leeds, on a personal level for Eric, his final three seasons at Leeds were completely different to his first four. He made just 25 appearances in his final three years at Leeds, compared to over 160 in his first four, mainly because of injuries which he sustained during Leeds' decline. The fallout of the Premier League started the financial problems at Leeds and as the big name players departed the club, Eric stayed. And when the Championship arrived following relegation, Eric was not only injured once again with a long-term injury, but was also the club's highest paid player, which resulted in some problems between him and Ken Bates, which you mentioned and he spoke about last week. That must have been a really tough time for Eric because it seemed that Leeds were trying to push him out of the club against his will because of his injury problems as well as his wage, which he, of course, couldn't really control. Yeah, I believe he said that he had no intention to leave Leeds after they got relegated and he was happy to stay, but he kind of hinted to the fact that it was more Leeds who were trying to get him out of the door. And if I'm right in saying this, I believe he was on 20000 a week plus something like £4,000 for every appearance he made. So, if anything, that contract kind of went against him in a way. Obviously, Leeds were in a lot of financial trouble at the time. And to pay that sort of money, albeit 4000 Leeds weren't really... Well, they couldn't afford that, and nor were they willing to do that. So, I think that definitely pushed him out of the door. If you haven't had the chance to listen to the previous episode with Eric Backer, or if you missed any of our other shows, they're all available on Spotify, YouTube and Apple Podcast, simply by searching the LUFC Fan Zone Podcast. Just before we go into today's show, today's episode is sponsored by Mystery Football Kit Co. So the guys over at Mystery Football Kit Co have reached out to us and happily agreed to sponsor the podcast and support us as a small business ourselves. They are Leeds fans and what they are offering is a Mystery Football Kit Box. And if you're not sure what a Mystery Football Kit Box is, it's the opportunity to get your hands on a shirt you might not have got before. It's from any team from any time, including this season as well, all over the globe. All you have to do is select your size on their website, as well as any kits or colours you don't want to feature in your mystery box. So obviously you'll be selecting no red kits in that category straight away. And your very own mystery shirt will arrive on your doorstep, and you won't know what kit you've received until you open up. All of their shirts are hand-picked to each order, and every item is of high quality, and I must emphasise as well, genuine. Brand new football shirt from either this year or any previous year from any club around the world. And because of our partnership, as well as the fact that we like to look out for our listeners, if you enter the code LUFC Fanzone at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your order. So make sure you head over to Mystery Football Kit Co on Instagram or www.mysteryfootballkitco.com to check them out. And make sure you add the discount code LUFC Fanzone at checkout. But on to today's show, and this week is the first of our story series where we speak to a former Leeds player who might not have been a regular first-team player or a well-known fan's favourite, but someone who has an interesting story to tell about their time at Leeds. This week's guest won Leeds' first ever Young Player of the Year award in 1998, beating fellow youngsters Alan Smith, Jonathan Woodgate and Harry Kewell to the end-of-season award. However, despite spending six years at Leeds, he played just four minutes of first-team football at the club, which was an 86-minute substitute appearance away to Portsmouth in the FA Cup fourth round in 1999, when Leeds were winning 5-1. So this week, we're going to find out why, and find out how a player who won the FA Youth Cup and won a Youth Player of the Year award didn't manage to cut it at first-team level. 
and listen to his Leeds United story. This week, we're delighted to be joined by former Leeds United midfielder, Tommy Narvik. Tommy, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Just to start with, Tommy, you left Leeds over 20 years ago now and you retired from football in 2014, but since then you've become a coach. How's that been for you? Because you're currently coaching in Norway, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, as you started, uh, it, it seems like yesterday, to be fair. It's been 20 years, but it seems like uh, not so long time ago, actually. Uh, I, st- I still feel young as well, so I don't know. It must be something with uh, with my form still. Uh, but it's it was a it was a good time uh, for me, and those twenty years has been has flown by. Uh, so many things has happened since uh, since my time in in Leeds. Um, uh, after I went home, I went uh, in my start. I started my playing career in in Brand Bergen as well when I came home from from Leeds, uh, and I had. Quite a couple of good years back in Norway as well, and as I said in 2014, I I um, I finished my playing career. Uh, probably I could have played a little bit longer, um, but I, well, I was quite keen to go into the uh, to the coaching bit as well. And in this couple of last years when I uh, when I played, I I did my coaching grades and my coaching badges and all that stuff. So I was. I was quite ready to uh, to move into the uh, to the managing uh, business as well. So when I was finished, so the last six, seven, eight years now, I've, I've been a coach back in Norway, and you know, I'm enjoying myself with that. Yeah, like you said, you've been a coach for six, seven years now at various Norwegian clubs, and during your time at Leeds, there were quite a few managers there as well, like Howard Wilkinson and David O'Leary, as well as Paul Hart, who was Leeds' youth coach. But have you used any of their methods in your own coaching style or tried to replicate anything they did while you were at Leeds to your own game now? Mm. Well, I'm quite inspired by, you know, the the English type of coaching. Uh, I came over when I was 16, 17, and pretty much my idea of coaching is I have to say it's it's almost like the English coach so for me it's like an, it was really an inspiration to uh, to learn from the best I had uh, Eddie Gray Paul Hart and David O'Leary and all these guys that I was uh, was coached by and you know for me it's, it was an inspiration uh, which I've as I've always said that the best coaches I had was my time in in England, so it was you know some of the stuff I've taken with me as well. So um, yeah, with all the clubs I've been to, there's there's been so many so many coaches to uh, to learn from. But I have to say, my time in England was was something special. And just before I ask my question, Tommy, would you uh, would you be able to just just to remind me how you pronounce that club name again? Because <laughs> I just want to make sure I get it right, that's all. But going back to your playing days, Tommy, and you started your career in Norway where you were born and you began your career at IL Skjaga. <laughs> and from there, you made the switch to Leeds when you were just 16 years old. So how did that move come about? And can you remember when you first heard that Leeds were interested in you? Well, I have to go back to when I was 14, actually. Uh, I was uh, with my national team. Uh, there was the under-15s. If I don't remember from memory right, I was in Ireland. We were playing a, a double national team game against Ireland and Iceland. Uh, at the time I was 14, there was me and this, uh, another player that was, um, was 14. There was only two of us who was 14 was in the, was in the, uh, in the squad. Uh, and we played those two matches in, in Ireland. And then there was, uh, a few scouts from, Leeds United that was there watching us. Uh, and as I said, at the time I was 14, uh, I didn't move to England before I was 16. I remember October 96, I remember. Uh, and then I signed my first professional contract when I was 17. So there was a gap in between. They scouted me until I left. So um, I remember that time quite well. Uh, I, I played really well when I was uh, with the national team and I had a good time. And in between those 
years when I was 14 till I was 17, uh, we went down to uh, visit Leeds as well. We had a couple of um, trips down to uh, to get to, to know the club a little bit better and they get to know me a little bit better. So everything was quite set from the time when I was around 15 till I was 16 and a half, 17. So there was a gap between there before I got scouted till I went over to uh, to England. Like you said, obviously you went over to Leeds a few times before you actually signed for the club. But were you aware how big of a club Leeds United actually were? Because obviously Leeds have a massive Scandinavian following. Yeah. But you know, were you aware to how big a club Leeds were and still are? No, not really. To be fair, in in when I was that young, you you don't you don't seem to uh, to know everything about what's happening around you uh because you, you know you're just a footballer and you don't see the whole picture before you uh, and and as i said when i came down you you can see the whole the whole setup and everything is it's so much different to what i was used to uh and as i said when i started i really appreciate my time in england it was it was only for three and a half years uh i wish it, it could have been longer uh but uh, it was a really good time for me and a time as well when I grew a lot as a person as well. It's not easy to, to move away from home when you were, you know, 16, away from all the safety back home, all your friends and all that stuff. But I was really, you know, determined to to make myself uh, a professional career within football. So, and I, you know, to be fair, there's, there's a lot of ways to measure success as well. Uh, what I can say for me is I, I've, I've managed to have football as a job for over 20 years now. So in, 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 in that respect, it's, you know, I may, I can say that I've made it as, you know, as a professional footballer from, from a youngster. And you, you know, you can measure it if you have 50 games in the Premier League or if you have 20 years as a professional footballer. So. It's been highs and lows, but mostly it's been really, really good for me. And that's that's made me who I am today as well. And when you first signed for Leeds, you, of course, joined the youth set up at the club. And at football clubs now, 16 is about the age where the scholarship programme starts, mm-hmm. where players aren't old enough to have a professional contract, but go to the training ground to obviously train on the football pitch, but also gain an education and have school classes like maths and English. Was that the same for you? Was that the sort of setup back in nineteen ninety five? And if so, what was that like? Especially as you just come from a different country and English might not have been your strongest language. Yeah, it's you know we they had a setup in in Top Arch. Uh, we had all the uh, we were at the old apartments and we had everything at the houses and you know we had this uh, teacher who came in. I think it was two times a week. Uh, we had this teacher after training and it was like, uh, what do you call it? Sports and leisuring, leisureism or something like that. Is yeah, that what yeah, it's yeah. probably yeah, sports and leisure. Sports and leisure. Yeah. yeah. Sports and leisure. That's, that's what we, uh, had as, uh, yeah, tuition. And the teacher was, he came in and we had, uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of hours a week with that. So, and then of course it was, it was mostly football and then, you had some of these uh, these other players that uh, who went to the university. I think it was uh, Alan Maybury and some of these Irish uh, guys. They went uh, they went down to the to the city and went to the had some extra stuff with the on the university. And I know you've just touched on it a couple of minutes ago, but when you came over from Norway to Leeds at a young age. Did you make the move on your own or did some of the family come with you? Because it must have been hard to for the social side of things as well, not just moving to Leeds United as a club, but moving to Leeds as a city. Well, yeah, uh, I remember the when the first trip I had, uh, we had to take the boat, actually. Um, there was a, there was before there was a boat going from Bergen to Newcastle. Uh, so I remember my mom, actually. Uh, I had I had this big TV crew with me as well on the boat. <laughs> I remember it as it was yesterday. Uh, so we took the boat from Bergen to Newcastle. We had this uh, big TV network back home who was following us from 
on the boat until we got off the boat until we went down to to Leeds and until we went into the apartments and so there was I remember my mom uh, she was with me the first time um and of course I stayed with Matthew Jones uh, I stayed with him in the at the digs if you call it like that uh, and he was he was uh he was a good friend uh, I remember that and he uh, we were we were a good fit together and you know we we were paired up for a couple of years that, and then after the after the couple of years I went into the um uh, family stayed with a I stayed with a family for a couple of a uh, couple of years as well so and that was in uh, Boston Spa so there was I really enjoyed that I was staying a little bit outside of um, of the city as well and it was close to the city it was not too far from from Top Arch or Weatherby or Boston Spa to go to the city as well. So I really liked that it was a little bit outside. Um, and yeah, as I said, we had a we had a really good time. And back to the football side of things for you at Leeds. And before we start talking about that FA Cup youth run that Leeds had a couple of years after you joined, what did you first make of that youth team that you were in? Because like we've already touched on, there were some extremely talented youngsters in that side at the time. Yeah, it was it was a special team actually. Uh, I don't think there was going to be. I think it's going to be a long time until you see the same setup of guys. Uh, I think most of the guys I played with they made their debut in the in the first team as well. So it was it was a crazy time actually. And we were at the time when I came over. I think we were probably the best team in in England. Um, I think we might might be the best team in Europe as well in that age group. Uh, we had so many talented players and uh, we had so many players in the same team as well that made the step from the first team uh, into the first team. And then we had from the U team to the reserve team to the first team. We had we had so many players that made the greats all the, uh, all the way. And uh, it was, it was a really good time. And we had, we had these amazing coaches as well. They 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 were so hard as well. It's it's hard to imagine how how tough they really were with us. Uh, which is which is something I've learned as well a lot. Uh, you grow as a person as well when you have these guys around you. They they put demands on you every day, and it's so tough compared to what you're used to. Um, so yeah, that's probably one of the things we. That we were so good as well. We had Q, we had Woodgate, we had Smith, we had all these guys that were so uh, talented. And and Leeds United at the time as well, they were they were really giving the youths a good chance as well uh, to play football at the highest level. So um, all the money spent in the academies and all the money spent with Top Arch and all this, I think, yeah, it really paid off. You have to say that. Leeds are renowned for having a very good youth system and like you just rolled off some of the names what were in that side. Leeds have only won the FA Youth Cup twice, once in 1992 and the second time in 96-97, which was obviously the team that you featured in that season. Leeds bet Crystal Palace 3-1 on aggregate to win the tournament in the final. But what can you remember about that run that season in the youth team and as well as the final against Crystal Palace, which was over two legs? Yeah, I remember we, we played some... Play some really good teams. Uh, I think we played we played Arsenal at Highbury. Uh, I think we played Everton at Goodison, uh, and then they had some really good players as well. I remember Crystal Palace had some really good players as well, and uh, so there was in that time there was all these other teams as well. They had some really you know, star names that managed to become really good players as well. So uh, I think that in that time in 96, 97, there was the level of the quality of the players and the quality of the teams was so high that, you know, to win these, uh, to win the Youth Cup, it was, you know, you, you needed something special. Um, and at that time as well, we had so many good players that could produce really good, good quality players that can produce the goods. So, um yeah it's it's hard to remember everything but you know the final and the teams we met there was i remember as well during that time uh, 
I played a little bit in different position as well. I spoke to the to the coaches if I can play some in different position. I remember playing center half actually, uh, mm-hmm. just beside Jonathan Woodgate. He was the tall guy. I was the small guy. I was the cool guy playing, and he was going to win all the all the headers and stuff. So <laughs> that was a good good experience for me that playing alongside him. And you know, we had we had Stephen McPhail, we had Harry Kewell, we had Matthew Jones, we had Kevin Dixon, we had. Yeah, we had so many, uh, so many good players. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to imagine that not, I mean, not everyone managed to stay in it, but most of the players that I played with, you know, they managed to stay at a really high level at the end. Staying on the topic of that team, what do you personally think made that team so good and so successful? I think is it is of course it's partly down to the uh, to the talent. We had, of course, you need you need to be a good player to uh, to manage to win the to win all that we did because we won the league and we won the intermediate cup, I think, yeah. Yeah, intermediate league, and then we won the youth cup. So we won pretty much everything, and we went out to Europe as well to play in this uh, some tournaments there against I think it was Feyenoord and, and Dortmund and these kind of uh, teams as well. But uh, well, as I said. Mostly, it comes down to the to the talent of the players, of course. But we had a mentality built up from from the coaches as well. You know, the demands were so high, uh, and they put the demands so high as well because we were a team that were able to deliver as well. Um, so they put the put the bar really high, and you know, the, the training the training every day and. Um, and all the you know with the setup and you know with the first team and they they made so many things gel in a good way the coaches uh, and all credit to you know especially Paul Hart <coughs> Paul Hart and, and Eddie Gray that was was the closest uh, to my to my team so they really they really did a, an amazing job with us. The following season, yet again, Leeds had a very strong youth side. And following the triumphant FA Youth Cup victory, the side won the Pontins League, which was the youth league which was previously held by Manchester United. Mm. And following that second successful season for the side, on a personal level for yourself, it got even better because you won Leeds' Young Player of the Year award at the club. Mm. In, In modern football, of course, it's a very good achievement, but today it's something which happens at the end of every season for most clubs. However, the year you won it, which was 1998, it was the first time the, the award had been won and you were the first player at Leeds to win that Young Player of the Year award at Leeds. Mm-hmm. So what did that feel like for you? Because like you mentioned before, that side was very talented. So you beat players mm-hmm. such as Jonathan Woodgate, Alan Smith to that award. And mm-hmm. of course, the award was specially created for you in a way. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, it, it was it was really special. To be fair, it was uh, you know, with mentioning all those names that you did now is uh, it means I think it means even more because um, it just in a sense it, it you know it put me in a in a really good place and in, in a really good position as well to to move on further as well. Uh, after I won the the youth uh, player of the year, you know, I made my debut as well in the. Uh, in the FA Cup against Portsmouth, and I was travelling with the squad. I was training with the first team almost every day, and I was um, uh, regular in the in the reserves as well, scoring goals and you know doing a lot of good things. And you know, so for me, it was that season was you know was a learning season, and the next season was, was going to be the the season I was going to you know progress a little bit more. If you may call it that, and then, yeah, it was. Uh, I was really, really, really un, yeah, unlucky with some of the injuries I I got. Uh, you know, the third, third year, because uh, that was that was really tough for me actually. I, I remember against United. I think it was at Allen Road, and I got I got injured in that game, and I tore my ligament in my my ankle and. I was away for I think it was six or seven months uh, of football. Um, remember the first game back against Bolton at Reebok Stadium. 
uh, reserve match, uh, I broke my arm. <laughs> so uh, that was actually the first game, first game back as well. So it was just it was just a crazy, crazy time for me. Um, it was so unlucky, and you know, I think for me, I definitely think it should it could have been different for me because uh, I got I got offered a new two year deal with with Leeds uh, at the time when I came back. Um, but I was I was only 19, 20, 20 at the time. Uh, and I was really far down, actually, because there was one year that was just lost. Uh, it was gone because of injuries. And, and, you know, it's not the same. If I compare to, if I compare England to Norway now, it's, it's just completely different. If you're injured in Norway and you come back from injury in Norway, it's okay. There's only one or two you're competing with. If you come back in England, if you've been away for like six or seven, eight, nine, ten months, you come back and compete. You compete against six or seven guys. Uh, so, you know, the level of competition, the level you have to, uh, you know, the mentality you have to have as well to come back and bounce back. Um, it's it's something that is really hard. Uh, it's, you know, when I when I see back, yeah, I would have kept going, uh, but I was in a place where I think I have to restart my career. Uh, so I went back to Norway at the time and and I started building myself back up again because, you know, it's nothing to do with I didn't want to stay. Uh, as I said, I, I got a new offer, but it was something with my with my mindset at the time that I needed to, to switch uh, on and move back home to start over again. But, I, you know, it, there's, there's really small margins in football. Uh, I remember uh, Alan Smith when he came on to um, against Liverpool, I think it was at Anfield. Suddenly he scores was it two goals or one or two goals he scored in Definitely his debut. Scored, yeah, yeah, I remember uh, scored. Yeah. And then boom, then he's in. It's just set. Everything is set for him to uh, to move on from there. And uh, you know, in a way, you can you can see the game again. Uh, again, the game against um, I got against Portsmouth. You know, that was my debut game and, you know, the building up to the next season was going to be something that I was, that I was going to uh, look forward to. And then, you know, a little bit of unlock, unlock on the way that, you know, changed that uh, perspective for me. And, you know, that's, that happens. Yeah. And just going for backwards a bit before the injuries, <coughs> you, you won the, You've you've player of the year, like we mentioned, but then the following season, the players that were in that side, such as Jonathan Woodgate and Alan Smith, like you touched on, then were getting the minutes in the first team. Whereas you had to wait until January until you got your debut at Portsmouth, like you said. Mm. How did you feel about that? How you were nominated and won the player of the season. However, the other players were getting them first team minutes instead of you. Mm. No, you know, I remember all the games we had uh, at Top Arch. We were playing with the with the youth side. We were playing with the reserves. And uh, what was good at the time that we had coaches that was really interested in what we were doing at the, the youth setup. So David O'Leary and um, he was at the matches watching us, and Eddie Gray. We, he had a good link between the first team manager and, and the youth setup. So uh, at the time I was playing really good football at, you know, with the reserves and as I said, with the youth team as well. And, you know, there was, there was some kind of, okay, now is this your chance? Next week is going to be your chance. Next week is going to be this guy's chance. So we were all, you know, motivated by each other, if you know what I mean. So we were all motivated to see, okay, he got his chance now. Now next week is going to be my my turn so uh, you know it, mo- it must have been difficult as well for for all the you know first team coaches and the youth team coaches as well because there were so many players that could have played every week almost uh, but you, you couldn't give you couldn't give everyone uh, a chance at the time but uh, but I think they were a little bit you know uh, they were pacing me into the to the setup so, as I said, 
I was training with the youth team, training with the first team, playing games with the reserves. Uh, and you, you managed to pace yourself into the, to the setup. And uh, I think at the time when, when I played in, when I got my chance at Portsmouth, it was, it was a really good time. Uh, I remember Eddie, Eddie Gray as well on the bench now. So saying to me that, yeah, go out and enjoy yourself and, you know, make it, make it happen. And, you know, that's what I, that's what I think I did as well. So, um, but, you know, it's it's small margins in football as well. It's small certain things that you could have done different, and you couldn't gone you couldn't gone this way, you could have gone the other way. So, but um, no regrets in one way. Yeah, and like you just touched on, then eventually an opportunity did come for you, and it turned out to be the only minutes you played for Leeds' first team, which was that away trip to Portsmouth in the FA Cup. Leeds were winning 5-1 and you mm. came on as an 86th minute substitute. Mm. So what did you make to that? Because you were saying about people getting their chances, but can you really call a four-minute appearance your chance? But you must have also, at the same time, been happy to make your Leeds debut. Yeah, that, that was the main thing, really. I think I think that was the main thing as well for, for all the uh, coaches as well, that, OK, let him get this uh, motivation let him get this boost to get on now and see if he can burst him on further now. And I think I had a couple of touches as well in that, in that game. I think I remember I took a corner kick. <laughs> so there's, there's a couple of things that comes to, it comes to mind. And um, even if it was five or six minutes, I think I was involved in a couple of uh, opportunities, you know, especially with the corner kick and all that. So, but it, it was a good time. I think we won, what was it in the end? Was it five two or six two? I think five one, five one. Five I think one, yeah. five yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah, it was um, it was a good time, um, and you know, as I said, it's for it was for me it was getting the chance, and you know, the coaches gave me a chance as well, and but it all came down to what I've done previously, you know, with the first team, and, uh, and now I mean with the uh, youth set up and. Um, with the reserves and, and everything. So, you know, you get your chance when you deserve it. You touched on how you left Leeds and that injuries set you back and you felt like there was more opportunities in Norway. And, you know, everything started so well for you at Leeds and with the awards and the trophies, you, it seemed to be quite a sudden end for you and very unfortunate end as well. But you could have easily quite taken the path of some of your former teammates in the youth team. And, you know, maybe you could have had a couple more opportunities. But would you have changed anything about your time at Leeds? And I know you said no regrets, but do you have anything that you would have regretted or that you maybe would have changed now with the experience of being in football for over 20 years? Well, uh, it's it's hard to say, really. Uh, maybe the one of the regrets I had that maybe I should have stayed in England. Uh, maybe I should have gone to... I had some offers from... From some other clubs, when I when I uh, left Leeds in England, uh, maybe that's maybe one of the regrets. Uh, uh, maybe I should have stayed a little bit longer, but you know, at the time I was I was just not fed up, but I was you know in a little bit lower place than I was uh, hoping to be. Uh, so the easiest way out for me was to go home to uh, to Norway, was which was a really good level as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe the, one of the regrets was not staying in England for a little bit longer. Um, and as I said, for this is this is something I've been talking to a lot of young players as well, uh, in regards to moving out early to to uh, to foreign countries. So it's it's all about you know knowing the club. Um, it's all about knowing. If it's the right move for you, uh, for me at the time, I felt really comfortable with moving to to uh, to Leeds in England. Uh, but it's, it's not for everyone. You have to be you have to be ready to uh, to move away, and because it's it's just a completely different ball game to what we are used to. Uh, and as I said, with the with the quality of the players, with the competition, with regards to the players, uh, you know this. 
there's a lot of players working to get into this position. So there's a lot of um, individuality, if you might call it like that. Uh, and one of my one of one one thing that I've spoken to a lot of young players is that you have to be a little bit selfish in a way. Um, one of my regrets as well that I I <laughs> there's a, there's a weird way of saying this, but uh, I wish I was more selfish in a way, yeah. more more stubborn uh, in a way um, that more willing to. Uh, Go well, not not go over dead bodies, but you know, you, be more tough. Yeah, uh, I came from a, you know from a different background than some of these players that I was playing with as well. Um, but uh, I should have. What I'm teaching now, the young players now, that to make it all the way, you need to be selfish. You need to be more selfish in a way that you take care of yourself first. Uh, and then, <clears throat> if you do, if you take care of yourself first, then you know this. You, you always have to think about the collective in the team, of course. You know that that doesn't. That, that's not what I'm saying, but it's it's all about you know taking care of yourself and making sure that you are ready uh, to stay in this game because it's it's not for everyone. Uh, you need to be tough mentally. You need to be tough uh, psych- psychologically and. And um, this is something I've learned along the way as well. Uh, when I came home, I felt more mentally tough as well with regards to what I've been experiencing in, in England as well. But at the time when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, with the thinking and mentality that I have, that I have now, I wish I could take it back uh, a few few years that what I know now, it's hopefully... Um, would be I would be so much better if I was if I if I knew that then, you know what I mean. So yeah, um, but it's it's a tough game uh, as you probably know as well with the youngsters coming up now. There's a lot of dreams coming. Uh, you you want to play for the first team and you want to succeed and all this, but uh, you know you have to um, you have to make some sacrifices and you have to be really tough with yourself and you have to be uh, in a way a little bit selfish to make it. Yeah, you touched on that word selfish and being a bit more stubborn. That's something that you wish you would have been more at at Leeds. But maybe not so now, but at the time and when you left Leeds, was there any frustrations towards whether it be the club or... Obviously, I'm not asking you to point anyone out because I would never ask that. But, you know, when you left the club as a young player, were you frustrated at the time? You know, maybe thought that you could have been given a bit more opportunity compared to your other teammates at the time? No, not really. Uh, I think, I, you know, with winning the award and playing in a, a really good first uh, youth team and we won what we did and we all we all were in a good place, really. And um, f- in my in my case, I think I was just a little bit unlucky, to be fair, uh, with, you know, with the year I was away in football uh, in Leeds, there was a lot of playing a lot of players progressing at the time uh-huh. <clears throat> and for me it was it was just a little bit unfortunate to be fair uh, that I was away for so long and the time I was away as well was was the season that I was supposed to take the next step as well so uh, yeah it's hard to say what could have happened but I uh, uh, I think I could have played a uh, few more games uh, for the first team uh, but uh, you know uh, the time I had in a way made me who I am today to be fair though so um, there's no no really hard feelings in the way because I know how the system works now better than I I did at the time because uh, as I said it, it's tough it's uh, it's a lot of players that want to succeed, and there's a lot of players, a lot of elbows and and stuff to to get through. Uh, so there's a lot of cynicism in in, in football as well. Uh, so you need to deal with it. Uh, this is something I I talk to my players and young players coming through as well. You need to deal with that. 
if you want to make it in in professional football, you, this is one of the aspects you have to deal with. Yeah, and when you left Leeds, Tommy, like you've said, you returned to Norway, but before you did, there were a couple of clubs interested in you, like you mentioned, and Hartlepool United was one club that you went on trial with. But although they're in the third division, there was no nothing was signed and you went back to Norway. Hmm. Was there a reason as to why you decided to go back to Norway as opposed to maybe sign for a club like Hartlepool? Because it might have been a good stepping stone to maybe progress your way back in the English leagues or was it just preference to go back to Norway? Yeah, well, it, as, as I mentioned earlier, it was um, I had a couple of offers from some English clubs uh, and... It's hard to say if if I regret this. Uh, maybe I should have stayed. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, uh, for me, the level in Norway when I went back to Norway as well was it was a good stepping stone to be in Norway as well because you know playing in the Premier Premier League back in Norway as well made some uh, made me get into the under twenty ones and you know with. I was talking to maybe getting the uh, the, uh, the full time national as well when I played in back in Norway as well. So there was a lot of a lot of good stuff happening back in Norway as well, and the level was quite high as well. So, um, but I, <coughs> I always had this thing for England though, um, which this is where I grew up as a player as well. If I might call it, those three and a half years made me made me really good, and you know. Yeah, I have something special for English football. So, uh, in a way, one of my regrets is that I didn't get back into uh, to England to play in England. But you know, this you can measure success however you want. Uh, I managed to stay in Norway in in a high level for for many years, and um, I'm quite satisfied with that. And. Like we've mentioned, from Leeds, you made the move to SK Brann and continued your career in your homeland until you retired in 2014 and you've taken up your coaching roles now. But how do you look back on your time at Leeds in general and do you still look out for the club's results like a fan? Yeah, I do. Uh, I really follow them now, actually. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of the, as probably you are as well, of the coach. Uh, he's, he's an inspiration for all for all coaches coming up as well, uh, even for the <laughs> for the best coaches in the world as well. So Bielsa is is something that we um, we all look up at, and um, Leeds United as well will always have a of a special special place in my heart as well, and and for my family as well. Uh, so um, it's really nice to see them back up now, and you know we. We watch them on on telly uh, every Saturday now, so uh, uh, it's nice to see them back now. With the only minus now is that we don't have uh, any fans in the in the stadiums now. So, but um, it's uh, it's something special to watch them play football now. It's it's uh, he's done a really good job now, uh, Bielsa. So, as always. In the second section of the show, we put forward four questions to our guests which have been submitted by some of our LUFC fans on Instagram followers. To have a chance of featuring, simply head over to our LUFC fans on Instagram page and look out for our guest announcement where the best four questions in the comments section of that post will feature in this section of the show. This week's first question comes from Martin who asks, Paul Hart was your coach in the youth side. What was your opinion on him and how do you think he got the best out of yourself and the other youth players at Leeds United? Uh, he, uh, as I said, Paul Hart, he was uh, a great mentor for me. Uh, he was demanding, he was, he was honest, he was, uh, he was tough, he was, yeah, he was everything you, uh, you want in a coach to, uh, to be a better player. Um, and he, um, he should be uh, he should be well remembered at the time that we were in we were in Leeds because he was um, he was probably the biggest part together with Eddie Eddie Gray that we managed to uh, to be what we were. And this week's second question comes from Nathan, who asks, 
Who do you think was the most talented player that you played alongside in that Leeds youth team and why? <clears throat> I can imagine uh, this is a difficult question to answer. <laughs> yeah, it is actually because there were so many, uh, so many good ones. Um, it, it's it's hard to come by to come by Harry Kuro because uh, he was you know when I, I remember when I first came he was he was something else. He was so strong and he was so fit and he was so uh, it was like a machine when we first came. He was he was the same age as us, but he was he was built in a in a different way, to be honest. Uh, and he was he was something special. But I had a I had a good relationship with Stephen McPhail. I really liked him as uh, as a player, and he was he played in my position as well, and we played together in in midfield and. Yeah, I have a, I have a, yeah, a quite good feeling about him because he was, he was so technical on the ball and he was so calm on the ball and he had something special around him and he made, he made a, he made a, made it look really easy to be fair when he played. So, and another player as well, which I was, I was always telling, uh, you know, my friends and all the people that asked me about Leeds United, who was the best player you played with? Um, <laughs> I have to say David Batty. <laughs> so David Batty, what a legend! Yeah, I remember when I played with him in the in the uh, the reserves, and he went down there a couple of times to play with us. And yeah, I think he was he was just amazing uh, to play around, and he had he was so everything. The best plays makes it look so easy. Uh, they make they make it look so nice and comfortable, and they don't stress. And you know, he was he was he was a really nice guy as well, uh, which was he was a big star as well, which is something maybe a little bit uncommon that you know they talk to the to the youngsters, and he was he was just a really nice guy and amazing footballer as well. Next up is Joe, who asks. When you began mixing and training with Leeds' first team squad, which players did you feel helped you and welcomed you into the squad the most? Uh, well, some of these Irish boys, they, they had a, they were really nice to us. Uh, I think some of Gary Kelly and Ian Hart and and these guys, they they made it a little bit easier for us because. Uh, you know, these guys, they had Alan Mabry and Stephen McPhail and all these Irish youngsters coming up as well. So they, they knew a little bit how the setup was working. Uh, and they came from probably the same uh, terms as us as well. They were, they were building themselves up and now they were a part of the first team. And so they took us a little bit under their, their wings, I might call it that. And then um, they made it everything a little bit easier for us, to be fair. So, and then you had remember as well. You had David David Hopkins uh, yeah. as well, and he, he played he, he played a, a vital role in in that Leeds team as well. And he was yeah, there was some some first teamers that was was really nice to us uh, youngsters. And this week's final question comes from Birch, who asks. What is your most memorable moment during your time at Leeds United and why? Well, the most memorable moment must has, has to be the, as I said, we mentioned it before that when I won the uh, Player of the Year award, uh, the Young Player of the Year award, it was, it was something special. I remember we were at the, at the Allen Road. We had this banquet or this big party within Allen Road and I remember coming up and receiving the award and all the first teamers and it was just packed with people and I had to, had to have this speech, if you might call it. <laughs> so I was only young at the time and I was I felt nervous and but uh, I managed to uh, managed to get through it and but that's certainly a moment for me that was special and you know, making my debut as well against Portsmouth was something that I really appreciate as well and something I remember fondly. Uh, you know, winning the Youth Cup, 
playing in the team as well that we did is something that I remember really great as well. Uh, having those coaches that we did at the time, uh, playing in the team that was probably the best team in, in England at the time, which was something... There's, there's, it's, there's something... There's difficult to say one moment that it's, okay, this... But this... I have to say four or five because it's hard to uh, rank them in, in one or two or three. And that ends today's episode. Thank you to everyone for sending their questions and thank you so much for your time, Tommy. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll be back next week with another guest. Stay tuned for the post over on our LUFC Fanzone Instagram later in the week. Thanks for listening.